Imagine what it must have been like on May 5th, 1942, receiving a letter like this telling you that you have six days to get all your personal effects in order because you in fact have to report to a Japanese internment camp in California. You didn't know it at the time, but you were going to be part of 11,042 people that were processed through the Manzanar, California camp for the 3.5 years during the duration of World War II. This camp was hastily assembled and put together in an area between the Sierra National Forest and Death Valley in an area that was known for temperatures that ranged between 30 degrees and 110 degrees most of the time. This is the scene that you would first see coming to camp and you would soon see the sign that's welcoming you to your new home that you didn't know how long it would be but it ended up being three and a half years for most people. These are some paintings of the people that were interned in this camp that were done later with little sayings and things that they like you to remember about their time in the camp. This was one of 10 facilities throughout the United States that was built. And this particular one consisted of 36 blocks of 12 buildings with an additional building for a bathhouse and a mess hall for each of the blocks. The building that I'm pointing to you now was the large building we saw in a previous frame that was actually a gymnasium and an auditorium that really was built only the last nine months to a year during everybody's stay in this facility. The size of this compound becomes more real when you realize that this diorama that you're looking at had a scale of one inch equals 40 feet. And some of the gardens and things that we'll show later were not built by the government. They were built by the people that lived here and simply needed to bring some beauty and life into their existence. The hard thing for us was that the weather on the day we were there happened to be perfect, which apparently was only sometimes because normally it was very windy, very dusty, and either 30 degrees or 110 degrees depending upon the season. Now the buildings you see here were actually reconstructed from photographs, so they're in way better shape than they should be at this point in time. Here we show the rows and rows of buildings that we're backing up to the mountains in the distance. And we're gonna walk now in a recreation of one of the bunkhouses, which of course is very clean and tidy right now. But I want you to imagine what it was like for eight people to live in this area that's shown through this wall. Remember, these people did not necessarily know each other and only occasionally it would be convenient where all eight people actually knew each other. You can only imagine how depressing it must have been being in this camp, being able to look out at the majesty and beauty of these mountains every day and on the days when the weather was nice, thinking how great it is to be alive, but how crappy it is that you are where you are in Manzanar. Sue and I live in an RV in 400 square feet, but there's only two of us. And this particular reenactment here shows how these bunks looked in the end after the people that lived there built all their own furniture and drywalled their own bunkhouses and lived in 500 square feet with eight people. 
I want you to study the picture in the upper right hand corner because that's what living here really looked like. The conditions, the mud, and the dust. Here we've got the mess hall. Kitchen number 14, there were actually pretty many of them. Figure there are, what, 10,000 people here at one point. Maybe not all at once. Not the way I would want to uh, spend my three years. These prisoners, because that's what they really were, worked for $10 per month to provide the vegetables, work the livestock, and work in the gardens to provide food for themselves and everyone else. The memoirs that people published later after the fact talked about how dehumanizing and embarrassing it was to have absolutely no privacy or personal space anymore. Those buildings that we showed previously had no ceilings. So the family next to you in a block, you could hear everything that was going on. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could probably climb over and visit them. To keep people busy and provide them with some beauty, they were allowed to build different gardens and ponds. And this one here was certainly beautiful in its day when it was done and was the fish pond. P Merritt Park was the showpiece of all of the parks. And it isn't much to look at now, but we looked at some photos in the visitor center of what it looked like when it was done. And you can see the elaborate effort that went in to try to duplicate some of the environment these people had before they were incarcerated into this concentration camp. When this camp was finally closed on November 21st, 1945, all of the buildings, the structures, the gates, the guard towers, the gardens, the fish ponds, everything was left in disrepair. And the accounts that we read said that it was literally covered in four feet of dirt that blew in from the constant winds and the rain and just the weather that people had to endure in this area. It was the residents of this camp that later knew that this history had to be preserved and physically banded together and dug out all of these areas so that they could be visited later by others to see what took place. A total of 146 people died while in this camp over the three and a half years and very few of it was actually by any violence that was in the camp, although there was a small riot during the time. Fifteen people were buried in this cemetery that was assembled, and only five graves remain today because ten of the other individuals were eventually moved by the families. <laughs>